Okay, we're now going to talk about observability. This is sort of a counterpart to controllability, and a lot of the concepts and ideas sort of have a similar look and a similar feel. Um, so, observability is all about being able to estimate the value of the state of a system at different points in time uh, based only on the output y. So, we talked a lot, a lot about this um, last time when we were designing our our controllers using an observer and a state feedback. Um, it's the, the value of the state that we would really like to know. This encodes all of the information about um, the current configuration of our system. Uh, but we often can't measure that. We often only get some snapshot through our output y. Um, but we would like to use this to get the best estimate for the value of the state at the given time. And observability is trying to capture the idea of whether or not this is possible uh, to do. So given the outputs that we have access to, are they going to be rich enough that we'll be able to deduce the value of the state? Um, or uh, is it just a hopeless task? Um, so let's just start by giving the definition of observability and then we can sort of discuss, I guess, some of the, the gaps between this definition and what we've just talked about. So what we've just talked about is sort of intuitively what we want. Now going to give you what observability means and then we'll sort of see various shortcomings um, or some discuss some weirdness uh, in the definitions. So. Um, Observability goes as follows. So the, the picture we should have in our mind is we have the output trajectory, y. Um, in the absence of inputs, this is what it looks like. So y of t is just given by c, and then the matrix exponential of a t times the initial condition, x0. And maybe it looks like this. So maybe, maybe this is y of t. And observability is about deducing the initial condition based on this output y of t and in particular it's about deducing that initial condition based on not the whole trajectory for all time but maybe only the trajectory up to some point in time so maybe we have some value capital t and we've yeah we've got uh, measurements on our output up to that time capital T and we don't have anything else so we, we've taken measurements up to here and now we would like to deduce the value of the initial condition that got us there based only on this part of the signal and maybe you would denote this like y naught t or something like that just it's just the part of the output signal y on the interval 0 t and Observability say, asks, um, so given any x0 and any t greater than 0, can x0 be uniquely determined? Uh, from y zero t. So, given any initial condition and any length of snapshot of our output trajectory, are we able to uniquely determine what the initial condition was that caused this? Um, so, uh, again, we have the same weirdness as in the controllability case. Capital T here can be made arbitrarily small. So for the system to be, uh, I suppose I didn't actually explicitly say, if this, if this holds, the system is said to be observable. And if it doesn't hold, it's not observable. Um, but in, in order for this to hold, it needs to be able to, this statement needs to be true for arbitrarily small intervals of time t. So we could be given an arbitrarily short uh, snapshot of the output trajectory and based on this we need to be able to uniquely determine uh, the initial condition that caused it. 
So being given an arbitrarily short trajectory or being given the whole trajectory, it doesn't matter. We should be able to uniquely determine x0 either way. And if that's the case, then the system is said to be observable. Um, so it's a little bit of a weird definition again. And also, again, you can see that it's connected to what we're interested in. We would like to know the value of the state. Um, and this is sort of capturing something about um, that process, but it's not really capturing what exactly what we want. Um, so uh, this is all about determining this value of the state at time t is equal to zero. Um, in reality, we want to keep track of what the state is as time passes. So the definition of observability and probably what you have in your mind as a concept of observability don't quite match. Um, but this is the convenient mathematical definition to design all the systems that match your intuitive uh, notion of observability. So uh, I guess that's probably what we can say about all of this. Um, anything else on observability I wanted to add? Um, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, so just like controllability, observability is something that we want to be able to test for. Uh, oh, no, no, I remember something. So uh, maybe the best way to think, this is a weird definition, but if you think, okay, well, what if it's not satisfied? So um, so it, it even it would also imply that given the entire out, so given all of the information on the output, we wouldn't be able to determine even the value of the state at one point in time. Um, so if, if a system is not observable, then it's sort of heavily suggesting that the, ta the task of building this observer, which would estimate the value of the state at all times, uh, hopefully very accurately, is, is looking pretty impossible. So it's sort of in that sense that observability is capturing the right idea, although it's sort of buried and obfuscated through uh, mathematical jargon. But anyway, uh, that's what it is, and it's the it's, it's the correct notion for what we intuitively want uh, to do. Um, and just like controllability, we can test for observability in a number of ways. So here I've just listed two equivalent conditions. Um, so on the one hand, we have the thing that we want to know. We want to know whether our system is observable or not. And then we have a bunch of equivalent statements, some of which hopefully are easy to test for. And the the one you've seen all seen it before, the one that we focus on, it involves the observability matrix. And just like the controllability matrix, the observability matrix is built out of con yeah, concatenating uh, various matrices and products of matrices together. This time what you do is you take the C matrix and you slot it in and then immediately below the C matrix, you slot in C multiplied by A, and then below that, C A squared, C A cubed, and so on, and you go up to C to the C multiplied by A to the power of N minus 1. And here N is the giving the dimension of the A matrix, or the number of state variables equivalently. So we build this observability matrix, and then the test for observability is, does this matrix have full rank? If it does, the system is observable. If it does not, the system is not observable. Um, and again, if you have just one output, this matrix will be square, in which case it has full rank if and only if it's invertible or if it has non-zero determinant. Um, if you have more than one output, everything still holds. This time, this matrix will no longer be um, square, in fact it's going to be tall, and the question is are there n linearly independent rows or are there n linearly independent columns? Um, and if so, then it has full rank. So this is sort of the uh, classic observability test. Uh, we could have written down part three involving the observability Gramian as well. We could have written down a part four with a Popovich uh, what is it, Belovich, you know, Popov-Belovich-Houters test. Um, 
as a, as further set of equivalent statements. Um, you've got a little bit more information on this in the lecture slides, and also they do a, a proof showing that one implies two and two implies one, and also something involving the observability Gramian. Lots of the idea is all sort of based on this Cayley Hamilton rewriting idea, just like in the controllability case. So we're not going to go through it again um, or go through these ideas again. Uh, but you can go and find the details there if you're interested. So there we sort of have a, yeah, a sort of a, a briefish rant on uh, observability.